this is Travis. I'm going to go over three subnets that I've never gone over before on this channel. I'm going to compare them with one another, and then I'm going to pick one at the end that I think is the best subnet to invest in given the choice of only these three. Obviously, none of this is financial advice. The way that I do this is I think about a very high valued subnet and a very low valued subnet that are both producing value. Whatever other subnets I'm researching, I can compare against those two subnets to get an idea as to whether or not that subnet is undervalued or overvalued. Well, obviously Shoots is the top subnet right now with the highest emissions and they actually have real customers who are paying to use the subnet. They've had so much traffic that they've recently turned off the free access to all these models. That said, I'm pretty sure it's like the cheapest place online that you can get access to models like DeepSeek and whatnot. So Shoots price right now is 0.14. We'll keep that in mind. And then what I like to do to find the lower price subnets is I'll just order by price ascending and I kind of look at those ones as the ones with the highest possible upside just based on risk reward because their price can do like a 100x whereas shoots cannot do a 100x so i'd suggest that you pick one of these lower price subnets that you understand reasonably well so for me since i'm mining on bitcast i'm just going to choose bitcast so in bitcast here miners are content creators that are evaluated by ai and they're getting paid based on their views by providing marketing services to BitTensor's more promising subnets. So if we look at BitCast price here, 0 0.0033, we're gonna assume that BitCast price is correct and Shoots' price is correct. And then we can take those assumptions, look at some new subnets, and then we've at least got a gauge for measuring how well those subnets stack up to existing subnets that are already returning revenue. So first let's take a look at Void AI here, subnet 106. So it says it's a multi-chain liquidity protocol enabling interoperability for BitTensor by leveraging Chainlink CCIP. Now I'll be honest, I don't know what that means. So let's take a look at their website here and we can take a look at the docs here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this information here, I'm gonna feed it into Grok. So if you missed my last research video, what I do is I've got this giant prompt here that I feed into Grok or any other LLM. And it's got a bunch of questions here that me as an investor, I want answered. I like to add sources to it here. Now finding these sources can sometimes be difficult. You can do a Google search, but you're probably not gonna get everything. Uh, so what I like to do is go to the BitTensor Discord here, find your subnet, so we're on 106, right here and then go up to the pinned messages to see what the subnet owner has pinned. Usually subnet owners are going to put in their GitHub here in the pinned messages, but I don't see any GitHubs here for this subnet. And not having a GitHub for your subnet is alarming to me. So the price right now is 0 0.013. That's kind of crazy that there's no GitHub for this yet and it has a price as high as this. Remember Bitcast had a price of 0 0.003. So that's like a quarter of this price and I don't know where the GitHub is. Now let's take a look at some of these AI generated answers here. What I do is I copy the AI answer to this column here and the source that it used. And then if I want to override an answer, I'll put in my own human answer here. So it says here that it aims to increase liquidity across blockchains. And I guess that's kind of the total goal here is to just basically create a bridge. Some of these answers are not so good. Miners need AI model development, blockchain and possibly cross chain skills. Yes to maybe these two. And yeah, so I'm, I'm just not getting really good answers on a lot of these questions because there is no GitHub. So I looked a little bit further and I looked at the subnet owner here, Zorro. Yeah, so he's the subnet owner of 27 here. So I think that explains why the price on this one is so high is because he's relatively well known in BitTensor. The thing about this though is that the subnet owner started the subnet before the GitHub went live. So validators, and their stakers and the subnet owner have been getting emissions, but nothing has gone to miners yet. I don't know why a subnet owner would do that. Now, as far as I know, the subnet owner Zorro does have a good reputation within BitTensor, but hopefully the GitHub goes live soon. So with Void AI, it has four times the price as BitCast. So BitCast has already been burning their alpha. They've received payments from subnet owners. They've brought in revenue. BitCast recently added this concept of agencies now, which allows many YouTube accounts to run under one UID, thereby making the mining process a little bit simpler because one manager just has to understand the technicals. So when you think of like how BitCast started, you know, there was no pre-mine. I was mining from day one. And they've also got this plan to grow to thousands of YouTubers through agencies 
agencies and many other upgrades that they've been doing to the network like weekly. Bitcast is positioning itself very long term, looking to get many hundreds or thousands of content creators. But when you compare it to a subnet with absolutely no code that has been out for a while, it just really seems like void AI is overvalued right now. All right, next let's look at SafeScan, powering early cancer detection with decentralized AI here. It does have a GitHub here and the price is reasonably low right now. So 0.002, so this is a little below Bitcast. Okay, so I've got my research here from Grok, revolutionizes cancer detection, offering free tools for public use and paid private solutions. It says the default miner is unlikely to be able to compete on the subnet, which is a good sign. It means that miners have improved upon what the subnet owner could do by themselves. So it looks like there's this skinscan.ai site here. So this is the app, I guess, that the subnet is developing right now. It's going to be available Q3 of this year. It says here it appears decentralized, no centralization noted. I think that's actually the wrong way to look at decentralization. You should assume for all subnets that they're centralized first and then uh, demand proof for their decentralization. For instance, if you look at Bitcast, the ability to create briefs right now is centralized. And that's understandable for all subnets. There's going to be a part that's centralized, but you want the end goal to be complete decentralization. The trade-off there, of course, is that you don't want to decentralize too early. You want some sort of like intelligent design for the subnet, some direction for the subnet before completely decentralizing. Let's also take a look at the code commits. There's been a few recently. Let's take a look at one of these top contributors. Okay, so this is interesting. They've got this overview of how miners are rewarded, it looks like. It looks like they're writing out a plan for the next one of the next competitions that they hold on the subnet. Oh, and you can actually see some of the code here for it as well. This is great, actually. This was two weeks ago that this was committed. So yeah, it looks like they're actually doing something on this subnet. Like when I look at these these code snippets here and stuff, it's like proper amounts of code as well. Some of the subnet developers, what they'll do is they'll know that I go and look here or other people go and look here for commits over time and they'll make a, a tiny commit every week or two just to make it look like there's work being done, which is why I like to drill down and see what's actually being committed. I won't claim that I understand all this right away, but there's actual code being written, which is awesome to see. And one of the things I would just wanted to draw your attention to here is dashboards. If you can find a dashboard for a subnet, uh, it can give you some really cool stats. So I found this one here. It just goes over a little bit about uh, the safe scan competition. But the cool thing here is we can see the competition results with a whole bunch of data here about miners, which is great. When you can see this miner data here, you know that the subnet owner is probably building something that they care about. And then one more thought about this is that I don't know how they're bringing in revenue yet. So they said that they're going to talk with people and they've got ideas, but I don't know if they've talked with anyone and have a concrete plan yet. However, the price is really low and it has the ability to do a 20x. I'm getting more comfortable with these charts where it just goes down and down and down. And like, I want to buy when it's gone down for a long time. So I think with this subnet, once they get a stronger idea of the roadmap towards revenue, it would be something that I'd be pretty interested in investing in. And the last one we have here is Taunado subnet 113. Taunado provides a zero knowledge token mixer for anonymizing Tau transactions in the BitTensor ecosystem, enhancing user privacy. Basically, if you want to anonymize your Tau, you send it to the mixer and then you get back some Tau into another address that isn't associated with the, your first address and that way it's anonymized because other people are also sending their Tau to the mixer as well. So you don't know whose output is whose. I'd probably actually look at using this service if it's not too difficult. It doesn't know what milestones we have here. It doesn't know the plan for growing adoption, but it does say incentivizes miners with rewards for Tau deposit. So I guess you have to provide liquidity as a miner. Who are the customers? Tau holders seeking transaction privacy like me. And then there's this part here that the website talks a lot about uh, burns. It says excess miner emissions are burned until the 1000 tau threshold is reached. I don't know what that means. People use the word burn in a couple different ways. The first is how I would normally think of it, which is you cannot get that tau back afterwards. 
Uh, there's actually a built-in BitTensor function to do the burning that makes your Tau go away. You cannot get it back. But there's some subnets that use the term burn to mean we send it to a, another wallet that we control and trust me, bro, we'll never sell it. And of course, from my point of view, I don't trust you, bro. I'm sorry. Required hardware, unaware of specifics, but standard computer, that sounds right because they're not doing any AI related stuff. So for the required skills here, it says basic knowledge of ZK snarks and BitTensor subnets and wallet use. How does the subnet work? Users deposit Tau into shielded pools via ZK snarks. Miners deposit Tau into an EVM smart contract for rewards. Okay, so what that means is that this is on the EVM side of BitTensor, which is really new and a little bit complicated to understand. It took me a while to understand it the first time that I looked at it. So I hope they're providing a lot of help for how to interact with that. And special tokenomics, subnet tokens, reward miners, excess emissions are burned. Again, I don't know what this means. And the total addressable market is BitTensor users needing privacy, potentially all TAL holders. That makes sense to me. Okay, so looking at their Twitter here, it looks like they already have a minor leaderboard going. Here's that 1000 deposit goal that I don't understand. And it says it's also depositing it into an EVM smart contract. So until they reach their thousand tau threshold and then excess minor emissions are automatically burned. So again, I don't know what that means here. And this also doesn't add up to 100% um, the math here, <laughs> but that's forgivable. Everything's very new here. so. How it works here, so you select a pool size, so you deposit like one, 10, whatever. Um, so let's say we deposit one, and then I guess we throw it into the pool and then later withdraw it when other people have withdrawn their ones before me, and then nobody really knows which one is mine. It looks like to use it right now, it'll be just through uh, their repository here using a terminal window. I'm sure at some point they'll make a UI for it. There's more information on their GitHub here. They've got roadmap phases here, which is nice. Although it'd be nice to know which one they're on right now. So let's look at the price here. So 0 0.003, so that's approximately the same price as BitCast. BitCast is bringing in revenue. I'm not sure if Tau NATO is doing that yet. The cool thing about this subnet though, is it has utility uh, in that I would probably use it uh, once it's fully working. So depending on their fees, uh, as long as they're not too high, I would probably use it. And then I'd imagine they burn some of those fees to uh, give their alpha token some value. The tricky part is where that equilibrium is. Um, it might be here, it might be way lower. As far as whether or not the burns or the fees or whatever they're gonna use to generate value, if that's able to keep up or not. It seems maybe a little bit overvalued just because I don't think it's live yet. So it looks like the first 18 participants are getting emissions. And then after that, no one's getting emissions. That's a bit concerning. But interestingly, there's no validators. These are all miners on the subnet right here. And let's actually just take a look at one of these guys. So this guy with the top emissions is 5ECPBW. So he's deposited 450 tau and he's generating 1000 alpha per day. So that's three tau. If he's actually making three tau per day based off of this deposit, that's pretty reasonable. Let's also take a look at this third one here to see if the rewards are proportional. So this guy's got 200 tau. He's getting 450. Yeah, that's about proportionate. So from this perspective, it looks like it's potentially worth mining because the rewards are so big. But until fees are introduced to hold up the price, investors in the alpha token, those are the ones basically paying the miners. And then lastly, let's just take a look at the contributions here. So some logging, it's not really a commit. And then there's some package stuff. Okay, and then he's been working on the EVM side of it, it looks like here. And this was committed two weeks ago. So yeah, there's a little bit of development activity on there still. Um, if we're looking at this in another month and there still hasn't been commits, then I'd start to get worried. So we've looked at Taunado, SafeScan, and Void AI. If I had to pick one of these three subnets, I would probably pick SafeScan. The reason for that is mostly the GitHub 
had lots of updates and was definitely being worked on. The developer activity coupled with the price being so low at 0.0027 leaves a lot of room for that price to grow as well. So I'm not saying that you should go out and buy SafeScan. I'm just saying out of these three, SafeScan looks like it has the highest potential upside when it comes to risk versus reward.